is shaping up over the future of Detroit public schools. All right, here's the deal. Next week, Governor Snyder is probably going to unveil a plan to radically overhaul the district. That's the rumor. The Detroit Free Press says he is considering splitting the district in two, creating an old district to pay off debt and a new district to focus on the job of teaching. This comes just a few weeks after a group of Metro Detroiters called the Coalition for the Future of Detroit School Children proposed different changes. Some of the group's recommendations included returning power to the elected school board, the state assuming some of DPS's debt, and more oversight over charter schools. Joining us right now, Lamar Lemons, who is on the Detroit School Board and has also served on that coalition and is familiar with the plan. And Audrey Spaulding, Director of Education Policy at Mackinac Center. All right, Lamar, let's start with you. Thanks to both of you, by the way, for being here. Lamar, you have been briefed on the governor's plan. Brief us, is, uh, if you can, on the plan and what you learned that this will include. Well, first of all, uh, I want to say I'm speaking for, as a member of the Detroit Board of Education and, and not for the coalition. But I was briefed on the coalition's, uh, excuse me, on the governor's plan, and we were. Um, I'm very disappointed that he wasn't going to take more of the recommendations from the coalition, quite frankly. So what is it you heard that disappoints you then? What scares you about this? Well, it looks as though he's going to try to charter the entire Detroit Board of Education, the Detroit, uh, Detroit Public School District. The, the emergency manager would still stay in place, Lamar? Well, yeah, well yes, he's going to try to implement a old code, new code, corporate uh, uh, strategy where the debt would stay with the old code or the existing school district and the new school district would be uh, debt free and could uh, focus on, quote, education. All right, Andre, before we get your, uh, your response specifically to that, I wanted to uh, re read a, uh, at least paraphrase a quote from a plan you wrote in a blog. You said the coalition's plan may very well have the unintended consequence of increasing the number of families leaving Detroit for better educational options. Now that is if this coalition's plan to, to add those uh, charter schools to Detroit comes to fruition. The governor is talking about something entirely different. Yes, actually, um, I wrote that post after um, hearing the story of a Detroit parent who had left the city but felt that she could come back specifically because she had the ability to send her children to ch a charter school. So the point there is that if the coalition's plan or if the governor's plan or any plan is t it takes place that would restrict choice in this city, it would drive charter schools out of the city and, as a result, Detroit p families. Lamar, I, I, I believe that you have said before that you don't think charter schools have had the success that they were promised to bring to the city. You, you believe that? Well, most definitely they have not been successful. But let me say this, that the governor has been operating the Detroit public schools for the last 53 months. So to, to whatever degree that the district has not had academic success falls squarely at the feet of the governor. But Lamar, let me ask you this. If you would like control back, the Detroit School Board back, some would say the Detroit School Board didn't have a great track record of great progress either and great success either when they were in charge. So how can you convince people watching well, today that the school board should be well, once again in charge? Okay, first of all, that's a misnomer. That is absolutely not true. Uh, when the Detroit School Board had control of the district, we had a $114 million surplus. We had 40 schools that scored at or above the national school, uh, the, the national school level, and uh, the uh, the uh, our, our, our children were uh, were improving in education. That was in 1999. Actually, the state has had now control 13 of the last 16 years. Yeah, and yet here we find an emergency manager. For some reason, they ended up taking over. Audrey, should the emergency management continue? Is Detroit capable of running its own school district? Look, first and foremost, the number one concern should be making sure that Detroit families have access to high-quality educational options. So in this case, like you mentioned, the Detroit Public School District had financial and academic failings well before emergency management. So really, it's not, it shouldn't be about the governance. It should be about what is the system that makes sure that we preserve parent choices while having the opportunity to improve academic outcomes. Lamar, one thing the coalition wanted was the state to take over the debt, the sizable debt. When you talked to the governor, he talked about it. When you mentioned the possibility of kind of two districts here, one dealing with the debt, one dealing with learning. Was, was the governor saying then that the state would indeed take over that debt? And on the contrary, he was going to shift that debt to the uh, taxpayers of the city of Detroit. And I found that most disturbing. Secondly, the, uh, we want the same options that you have in Livonia, the same options that you have in Gross Point, Bloomfield Hills, 
et cetera, et cetera. The same options, the same choices. Now, Audrey, what do you think and about that? they all have an elected school board. Uh, yeah, Audrey, what do you think about that as, as you said, splitting the district? What do you think of that idea? Uh, you know, I think that splitting the district is a model that was used in both Highland Park and Muskegon Heights. Muskegon Heights has managed to drastically reduce its debt. Highland Park has reduced its debt as well. So just that idea of splitting the district itself has a track record of success, at least when it comes to financial outcomes. We do want to mention that we did contact, of course, the governor's office, wanted to have someone on from the governor's office to talk about this. They could tell us that they're working on some final components of this plan and that they are not talking about any you know, aspect in, in particular right now. So we're hoping next week. Did you get the idea, Lamar, that next week an announcement will come? Yeah, well, we anticipate it coming early sometime next week. And what do you do when you hear his plan? What's the next step in all that? It would have to go to the legislature. So well, what do you do then? Well, then we go lobby uh, for our plan, which is to restore democratic control of the school district like they have in Livonia, like they have in Gross Point, like they have in Bloomfield, like they have in Farmington, like they have everywhere else. But with the exception of a few other African-American school districts. But Audrey, you don't think that's a good idea? You know, um, all of those other districts that were mentioned aren't facing the same emergency that Detroit Public Schools is, so it's important to keep in mind that DPS has more than a billion dollars in debt, so this warrants some extreme measures. Okay, Audrey Spaulding from the uh, uh, policy, uh, Education Policy Mackinac Center, and of course, Lamar Lemons from the school board. Thank you very much for both joining us today. Coming up next, we're going to talk